fact is, it is getting to be crunch time for Colorado because you are running into a part of the schedule where you need to take advantage of who you get to play before you get into the upper echelon of the Big 12. One and one, right? Got the win against North Dakota State. Took the loss against Nebraska. The thing about the Nebraska loss is that two things were laid bare. One, Shador Sanders is fed up with this offensive line, and he's fed up with not having enough protection for what he thinks is going to make him successful. Now, you'd be quick to point out, and you'd be right to point out, him throwing that pick six on the goal line, that ain't got nothing to do with the offensive line, except if you feel like you're about to get blitzed and you're about to get hit, probably going to get rid of the football a little bit sooner than you might, and Tommy Hill was staring you down going, thank you, I will take that back to the house. Aside from that, you're also looking at a really underrated stat for Shadour. When Nebraska did not blitz him, he was 13 for 13, meaning that you have to get pressure on Shadour to rattle him, and you're probably going to see more of that as the season goes on from everybody they play. I dare say most, most defenses are going to send at least five after him because it is very clear that this offensive line cannot block big on big. If you wanted to run Bob with them, good luck. Somebody is going to be weak, and somebody's going to get beat, and somebody's going to get to the quarterback. Shadour was sacked six times against Nebraska. They sacked him seven times last year. Last year, he was hit 199 times. He was sacked 50 times. He got a vertebrae in his back broken. Now, this means that both of Dion's sons have suffered some measure of big-time injury. The uh, cracked vertebrae for Shadour last year and in the game against Nebraska, Shiloh Sanders was attempting to make a tackle, and he broke his forearm. He's had surgery. Prime gave an update. Sounds like he's going to be okay, but he certainly is not going to be playing this weekend. The thing that I think is underrated about Shiloh is, A, he the other brother, right? The star is Shadour. He plays quarterback, and he plays it well when he's got protection. The other star is Travis Hunter, who feels like a son to Prime, right? But that guy goes both ways. And even he was showing some frustrations both offensively and defensively against Nebraska. But the thing that people are forgetting about Shiloh is he is the second best defender on that team. And from a production standpoint, he is the best defender on that team. He led Colorado in tackles last year with 70. He had 55 in Pac-12 play. He had four forced fumbles. And against North Dakota State, he had nine tackles and one for loss. He was one of a couple of guys on that defense that you could depend on to go make plays. That was the reason he's starting at safety and he gets to where his father's NFL number of 2021. 20, uh, I'm curious to find out what the depth is like at that safety position because well, without Shiloh and with Trevor Woods getting ejected for targeting, we're looking at a safety combination that could be pretty damn good that is going to be unavailable against Colorado State. Or I should say both of them are going to be available at some point, but one of them is not going to be available at Colorado State. That said, it's still about the trenches for Colorado. They still cannot run the football, and they still can't, get to the quarterback. To Shadour's point on Saturday, how many times did Riola get touched? He was clean all day. And one of the reasons is they could run the football. And because Colorado is no threat to run the football, I will send the house after you. I will send Engage eight. I will load the box with eight defenders. You know, I, I can do whatever I want to you because – you're not going to hand the football to Dallin Hayden because you can't open up any lanes for Dallin Hayden. And Pat Shermer is coming to find out what Sean Lewis already knew. If you depend on that offensive line to get push, you're cooked. Phil Lodeholt is in his first year as offensive line coach at Colorado, and really offensive line coach anywhere. Phil Lodeholt played at Oklahoma's damn good offensive lineman in the NFL and club, frankly, at Oklahoma for some time. But he ain't a miracle worker. You know what I'm saying? Like, you give Bill Biedenboe that offensive line at Colorado, are they going to be that much better? 
Are we going to be a little better? Yeah, because Bill Biedenboe is one of the best offensive line coaches in football. But even he knows there's only so much he can do with the talent on hand. Jordan Seaton is one guy. Colorado fans love to point to Jordan Seaton. You know, true freshman, uh, five-star, could play in the NFL. Offensive line is the one position in the entire sport where you can't do it by yourself. It don't matter if your left tackle is good because you need all four of those guys to be good next to him. So if that unit is not good, you're going to be garbage. The thing that I would have loved for Colorado to set a goal for themselves this offseason and into the season would not have been to win games, right? It would not have been to get to bowl eligibility. That would be a byproduct. It would not be for Travis Hunter to win the Heisman Trophy. That would be a byproduct. It would not be for Shadour Sanders to prove to everyone that he is a first-round quarterback, all-American quarterback. That would be a byproduct. It wouldn't even be for Robert Livingston or Pat Shermer to win the Broyles Award, for which I'm blessed to have a vote. That would be a byproduct. What I want from Colorado is to pursue the Joe Moore Award. The Joe Moore Award is given to the nation's best offensive line. That's it. If they have the nation's best offensive line, everything else works. Everything else works. Even your defensive line gets better because you're not on the football field as often as they are. And you might be able to play with a lead, which changes the way you have to call your defense. If you have the Joe Moore Award winning offensive line, you can damn sure run the football. And you can damn sure protect the quarterback. That's what that means. If you're able to run the football, your defense is not on the field for very long because you are eating clock as you are running the ball. You allow your defense to do what other people are doing to you. You come after them because you're fresh. You don't have to rotate as often. There's so many other benefits to simply having a great offensive line that it is ridiculous that that is not Colorado's focus in particular. I think about it the way that I think about squatting. When you're in high school, the last thing you want to do is squat, right? You want to do bench. You want to do curls. You want to get the beach boy muscles, right? I understand that. But I'm going through this as a strength coach, and one of the first things you learn is when you squat, everything works. When you squat, injury goes down. When you squat, nobody gets to run through you, and you run through other people. When you squat, you get an engaged core, and that is the trunk that allows for all this power to go. If you can squat and you can clean, you can do anything. Squat and clean, squat and clean, squat and clean. Why, why isn't the squat, offensive line, what Colorado was after with this, man? I don't understand. And there are lots of different philosophies about how to build an offensive line. I just wish they would choose one that would work. Because players getting injured is part of football. But so is running the ball. You know what I'm saying? We think about Shiloh, and I want him to be okay. But I often wonder how many plays is he out there that he shouldn't be if they were able to run for first downs. You know? I often think how many times is the defense put into a compromised situation because the offense is not doing its job of playing complementary football. All these things, I believe, are byproduct. If you can run the football, if you can take care of the ball, you have a chance to win any football game. Take a look at what Northern Illinois did to Notre Dame. Take a look at how difficult it was for Notre Dame to move the football on Northern Illinois. Why on earth is Northern Illinois a better football team today than Colorado? Why on earth is it Thomas Hammock who is getting tears in his eyes about going into South Bend and getting a win with his Huskies while we're talking about Coach Prime watching his child walk off into the tunnel with the game still going on and we have Colorado in a position that we could have predicted given the way that things have gone the offseason and earlier this season. Something has got to change. Something has got to turn around. And it has to change and turn around in a hurry. Oh, since we're here, subscribe to the channel. It's 104,000 of us. 
60, what is it, 64% of the people that watch this show do not subscribe to it. Please, give me your subscription. It costs nothing. It's just hitting the button. It's very cool, um, and it allows for the channel to continue to do cool stuff like make this show in 4K.